My name is Andy Moschietti. I'm not a host, as you will notice. Um, I'm a filmmaker. I'm a very good friend of Will. Uh, will Eubank, the director. <coughs> uh, I was asked to, to host this uh, Q&A, so that's what I'm doing. I'm very proud of this. <laughs> I'm sorry. What was that? Who said what? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, um, that's how, I, yeah, so it was five years ago I met, uh, I came to LA. I'm from South America, I'm Argentinian. Um, I made a bunch of movies, and um, when I, I, after I did my first movie, I came uh, to LA, and of the few people I met that I cherish, uh, there was Will. I went to a screening of a movie called The Signal, and the director came up to me and said, man, you're so cool. I love your movie so much. I love your movie Mama so much. This movie, The Signal, is a homage to Mama. I still don't believe that, but uh, I take it. It's true. I'll take it. It's true. <laughs> Mama's back. Mama's back. Mama's back. I don't think all the movie was a homage, but there's a little bit of that. By the way, I recommend uh, the viewing of The Signal. I love uh, Will's previous movies, which are great, amazing. Uh, so I already tipped my, my hand, or my head, I don't know, I, my English is, is not very good, uh, about the presence of the director, Will Eubank. Give it up to him. And the cast. Mamuri Wache. Jessica Henwick. John Gallagher, Jr. And last but not least, Kristen Stewart. Uh, Andy, I love you. Thank you so much. For I love you too, guys. Right. He uh, literally, this is, he, I said, Andy, please, please <laughs> post our Q&A. So this is a huge favor from him. And I, obviously, if you haven't seen the movie It, you should check it out because it's pretty good. But um, I love How about it too? Oh, yeah. I really, really love that movie. Oh my God, I, now I'm blushing. <laughs> <laughs> we um, love you. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, well, congratulations for giving us such an amazing film experience. I saw this movie a while ago, like, you know, a few months ago, and it didn't have any visual effects, but I already had a sense of, the, the, you know, the amazing, the amazing storytelling, uh, you know, the build-up, suspense, scares, and the emotional, you know, uh, beats and everything and I really love I really love this movie um, so tell us a little bit will let's we'll start with will how about starting with the director um, how did you how do you start with all this um, I honestly I, I got the script and it was like one of those movies that you just read through so quick it was simple in its concept um, I feel like the simpler an idea is then the more you can give to the complexity of like how you render it. But uh, yeah, I just uh, I read the script super fast because it was that good. And I was like, uh, Brian Duffield wrote it and he did a great job. And it was like, it was funny and it was heartfelt and it was just in a bombastic place at the bottom of the ocean. And I thought that would be um, interesting to try to figure out how to do. So I called my agent. I was like, this is awesome. Put me in the room. <laughs> There's also something um, very unsettling about the bottom of the sea, which is one of the, you know, because it is one of the places in our world that is unexplored. So you can actually, like, pull it off, you know, pull off a science fiction movie that actually is not that far-fetched because it's, um, you know, it's a world that is unexplored. What yeah. do you think of that? I think... It's like, yeah, it's there's so you know, it's funny. A lot of people are like, Oh, it's the abyss, it's the deep star six, it's Leviathan. That's you know, they true. they that render it. that was him the whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do reference a lot of movies, <laughs> but it's you know, it's like, yeah, you gotta make movies about great places, you know, and it's just like because there's two westerns in existence doesn't mean you can't make more, you know. And uh, for me, I just was like, God, to do an underwater movie, I don't know how I'm gonna do that, but that'd be pretty cool to do. And it's a great place to put a struggle in a place of survival and to put a very fragile but also um, intense character like Nora Price. So. Yeah, you're segueing to Kristen, but not yet. Okay. <laughs> I have some more <laughs> no, about, about that. 
So uh, speaking of which, because you mentioned other movies, uh, I, I admire you as a filmmaker. You know that Will is not just a director, he does everything. He's like a production designer and a cinematographer, uh, which for someone that just is, you know, like likes films and does film is like, you know, it's like, it's, it's something that is pretty awesome that someone like, like, like Will can do actually everything. Do you, do you get like, do you, uh, is it annoying for like production designer and like cinematographers that, that you tell them what to do all the time? <laughs> no, honestly, Boyan, our cinematographer was so good that it's just like, it, to watch him work, it was just bonkers. Um, Name and Marshall, our production designer, did an amazing job. But yeah, I think for him especially, it was annoying because it was like, ah, oh, it's got to be more like this. It's got to be more. You know, you're constantly pushing. Uh, you were a production designer on your own. On your my first own movie. little film, yeah. So it doesn't right. count really. But you still How have annoying. an opinion, you know. Yeah, I would <laughs> fucking hate you if I was like, you know, like working for you. But that's fine because actually you. You're you're actually you know, you're, you basically storyboard every single shot of a movie. How is it that for for actor, How do actors react when you tell them this is the the scene? This is. Um, I was watching some behind the scenes the other day for Blu-ray, and John was like, "Yeah, Will's crazy. He shoots like 20 different versions of every scene." So <laughs> it was it's like a little uppercut. He was like, "Make up your mind, you son of a bitch." <laughs> And yeah, I'm sure. I relate to that. Yeah, they all feel that way. So <laughs> no, because there's a new, there's a whole new world. You you shoot a what movie. Were those storyboards that we looked at? That was sick for a second. Yeah, it was cool. I don't know if it rendered that way, but we had them. Does he show you the storyboards, or the storyboards are there? I don't remember any storyboards. You don't. Yeah. They weren't there. Well, so he made them, but he didn't show it to you. No. Oh my God. I saw some dude. There were. Lots and lots, lots of pictures. Yeah. Um, some of them coincide with what we did, and some of them don't. But they were definitely all like diving boards. Um, diving but like, boards. so many diving boards, dude. Like, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> many, 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 many pictures. <laughs> yeah. so. um, okay, that <laughs> that settles then. Um, <laughs> were you prepared for something like that? Because it's a bigger movie than the stuff that you did before. Like, did he, did, were you aware of the of the challenges that that came? Definitely. I mean, sure. to a certain degree, we knew certain things were going to be hard, like the suits and things. But I don't think until the first day of shooting that we knew it was going to be that hard. And the, like, you'd get to a place where you, you knew you were putting the actors into pain, and you were like, okay, I don't know, do I just say it's done, or do we try to do it again? So there was a lot of brutality to trying to make the movie that is not totally like you see it in their face and it's real in the movie but i wasn't really ready sure for that, but so did you they were you 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 faced challenges that you hadn't faced before for sure like water for instance yeah water <laughs> suits. like most of most directors that film that make films with water recommend not to shoot in water <laughs> what what did you think it was a good idea to I didn't think water. it was a good idea. I just, I knew I wanted to do it. <laughs> so we just decided to go for it. And honestly, like, we were trying uh, you, to get them thought, to training. Oh, it's going to be fine. And Kristen was like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to learn how to do this. Just put me in the damn thing <laughs> on the day. I don't care. It's going to be so awful. Just do it. So. Look, I mean, like, I could have trained more to scuba dive in suits that didn't work. Yeah. But it was like, it just, it was like really scary. <laughs> So like I mean look like let's like shoot it and then hopefully it's on camera because like if we do more of it it, it was it's not like it doesn't bode well for any of us and um, there was no like no amount of preparation that would have gotten us ready to do this though yeah. also it's like we're playing like mechanical engineers there's no like knowledge or they're normal motherfuckers being like what is going on I just had a job here I just work here <laughs> like uh, uh, so yeah no I didn't train for that at all it was all it was I was scared of it. Did you get to that moment where you think you got it, uh, but he, like the director comes and says, uh, uh, it's, it's good, but we, we'll do I it again. I didn't get it. <laughs> I wasn't rolling. <laughs> no, definitely not. Uh, no, I just couldn't, I, I, like, uh, specifically for like the submersibles, I just actually was too scared. I would do anything else that he asked me to do mm. all over and over. Right. Um, but in terms of going underwater, I wasn't as good at it, at it as these guys. I was just scared. I was just like fucking claustrophobic, and I couldn't. 
like I could I couldn't deal with that. But that's specific. This was a fucking hellhole for a million other reasons. <laughs> like, I didn't like to go under the water, but like, well, that's that was the least of it. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Where does you know because it's a it's a it's a story that deals with claustrophobic like you know claustrophobic spaces and restrained spaces and the the threat of drowning. Uh, Is that in English? Yeah. Yeah, drowning. Yeah. And on top of that, there's creatures. You know, I don't, um, we don't want to spoil too much, but there's creatures. And so there's like the natural disaster kind of thing, and then there's like more. Uh, so all these things pile up. Um, so to, to what point, because I, I know that these things, like working on, on sets that actually like let the actor immerse into the, you know, the, 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 the moment and everything, and the, the suit and everything help you like build a character and the moment. But is there like a point beyond which it starts to bother you? Yeah. Is there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it distracts you from, from doing it. Um, That's for all of you. But let's yeah. start with Kristen. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, it was like distractingly horrible. <laughs> But at the same time, like the, we basically made a movie about people trying to survive making a film, and and then that's what the movie's about. Like, obviously, you know, you you, you put any sort of traumatic like um, crisis situation against the backdrop dra backdrop of like total darkness, where you're like mm -hmm. you're either looking into like space or like the bottom of the ocean or just like the backs of your eyelids, and that is scary to not know what is sort of beyond. But in terms of making the movie. No, it was really <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> I hated it. I don't know. Like, I mean, you guys feel the same way. It was fucking horrible. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the suits were so hard to move around in that, like, I don't remember any acting choice yeah, that's I made. What I'm saying. <laughs> like, I just remember being like, "Get to the other side yeah. of the set," <laughs> and just what the and look about. like a like, a, a human yeah. right. that is capable of moving yeah. around. And Will would be like, "Try it more like this." I'd be like, "Got it," <laughs> but in my head, I'd be like, "Get." to the other side of the set. It was like the only thing I remember trying to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I agree. I actually, it all just has blended into one in my memory of just like suit time and, and then other life. Um, and I don't really remember any of it, to be honest. <laughs> it's erased, suppressed. What well, well, question again? <laughs> How was your experience with the Suit, I guess. <laughs> All of a suit, right? Diving suit. Just talk your voice cracked about while about saying suit. suit. <laughs> <laughs> I do that very. <laughs> I do that every um, every day. Well, I, well, yeah. I, it was pretty similar to everyone <laughs> on this panel. But my favorite thing was we're when, not in the suit not, that much. Not long. <laughs> yeah. But my favorite thing was when uh, Vincent Vincent Cassell goes like, "Come on, guys. Did you read the script?" Oh, <laughs> really? yeah. yeah, but nobody expected that it would be no. so. Bad. You're like a right. wild banshee Frenchman freak. <laughs> <laughs> you, how are you doing this? Yeah. We were Vincent, like, who is oh. not here, literally doing pirouettes. In this. Here's the thing. He's Vincent, French, who is right? not here, was literally yeah. like, "Come on, guys." Did you not read the script? Or Go what? fuck yourself. <laughs> he was but he was hardcore. He was ready by like month two suit. though. He was definitely like, I'm not getting in the suit. He yeah, no. Like, but at the end, definitely. his back was fucked. <laughs> like, and he was like, I don't, I don't like the suit anymore. Yeah. I complained about it one day, and he was miserable. like, he was like, you know how many actors would kill to be where you are? And I was like, oh my god, you're right. I'll never, I won't complain ever again. And then like two weeks later, he was like, I hate the suit. And I was like, see, it's not so easy, is it? We cannot do anything we want to do, so fuck it. <laughs> Same. No, but the suits, like you know, uh, for what for what it's worth, I t I'm telling you, all the suffering was worth it. I, I, those yeah, suits I are fucking amazing. I haven't seen uh, that kind of like uh, imagery in a long time in a science fiction movie. With this, like you know, suits are very uh, imaginative. Um, it reminds me of. Uh, I, don't, I I let me ask you something because I I I'm old. I, I grew up in South America, but reading some, this French metal hurland comic books, and there's artists like uh, Ciccioni and uh, Moebius that are very much in the same vein of these kind of, you know, gigantic suits over bulging. Uh, did you draw inspiration sure. from that? Moebius, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but yeah. uh, for sure. Like, if you see the, what's the film where they're talking about the making of the first Dune that never happened? Yeah. Yeah. You it's see all of his art, book. which end up, ended up, he 
uh, Ridley, when he started Alien, took all of his artists. The Jodorowsky, Jodorowsky yeah, version. Jodorowsky. Yeah, Jodorowsky. And uh, I saw that, and I was like, oh, my God, those suits are so cool. And mm -hmm. it, so a lot of inspiration from his world. Um, and, yeah, just tried to draw on that for a lot of the movie, obviously, which you see. But we had a lot of fun with that. The so suits that. the suits were cool to me because they reminded me of Gundams. Uh, does anybody know what, Gundam. what a Gundam is? Anime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a mecha suit from, like, a Japanese anime. Anyway, else, mm -hmm. that's what really turned me on about those. Such things. a weeboo. <laughs> a little French, a little Japanese, yeah. a little bit of everything. Yeah. Um, let's get serious. Uh, Kristen, <laughs> what attracted you? Uh, from the to Kristen's do it. Uh, no. <laughs> what attracted you of the role of, of, of Nora to make um, this movie? Uh, well, when I when I read the script, it was like fairly, it was like pretty roughly drawn. Um, uh, the people that exist in the movie now didn't. They were kind of, uh, yeah, just sort of. Um, they need they needed to be peopled by by like human beings, and I thought it was a really nice sort of like weird starting point, like really fundamental starting point to do like this thing about people that were um, ill-equipped to deal with what they were dealing with, but had somehow brought it upon themselves and were kind of like flailing to figure out who they were while you were also getting to know them because the movie starts in the first five minutes, the whole fucking thing blows up. Right. Um, so you're kind of like going like, what? what's wrong with you? Like, why aren't you very talkative? Why are you funny and weird? Like, why are you, you know, I just thought the whole thing was sort of, um, people like show their true colors and points of like severe weird crisis. Right. Um, and this girl was like, uh, like the whole time I read like the first like 20 or 40 pages and the whole time I was like what's wrong dude like what's wrong with you something has clearly happened but then this is the person that stands up and actually is kind of like um uh you know it's not like uh ver it, you know it's not like a more it, there's nothing moral about the story that's what I liked about it it wasn't about like oh I have shit to like live for i have a son up there i've got to get up there for him it's like no i have fucking nothing like literally nothing and mm -hmm. and um so like you know the people that show up for you at the end of the day some people suck some people don't this girl was just kind of like oh man um figured out how to like people in a condensed mm -hmm. shitty environment also i thought it was cool to tell a story about like traipsing upon shit that you shouldn't be touching and then you know uh, the subsequent repercussions are vast, and um, I don't know. I, I thought like the backdrop of uh, nothingness yeah. was a nice starting point, and I thought that I, I really love working with singular voices that are weird and and finding themselves. And I thought Will had done a really great movie, and was just sort of like our first meeting. I was like, yeah, I'll fucking hang out with you for a couple months and do something fucking weird, and. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, and I hadn't done a big movie for a while, so I was like, I gotta do this thing. <laughs> and I'd never done a big movie, so it was a match made in heaven. Yeah, that was pretty much it. That's great. Uh, I pick on the on the fact that you know you mentioned the that the story like kicks in immediately without knowing anything about the characters, which is great. Um, uh, and also, I agree. Like there, you know, it's a movie more about the characters that are dealing with loss more than you know something to live for. Um, and um, there's a deal about selflessness, I think. There's a, some kind of arc that throws a lot of the characters into sacrifice. We can't really spoil this because this is going to be streamed uh, for people who don't, didn't see the movie. Are but we there on is TV right now? We're on TV. Oh, yeah. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> We're somewhere. <laughs> We're somewhere. <laughs> so we can't give it up. But I think it was masterfully, you know, that the fact that, you know, certain, uh, you know, beats of, Backstory or like thrown in there when the when the action already started. I have a Mamudu. I have a question for you, sure. which is uh, it's a, a very de detailed. You know, it's a very subtle like beat in the in the story when uh, the first first scene with Kristen is fucking amazing. Have you when when you were shooting it? Did you did you did you think it, it was going to be so spectacular? You know, I haven't seen it yet. Oh my I god! Yeah, I know. I haven't seen it. Yet. What did it feel like? <laughs> Okay, it's amazing. Oh, cool. It's spectacular. Well, well, you're specifically asking the entire scene? No. Wait, I'm you didn't just watch the movie right now? <laughs> I, just mentioned, I just mentioned that the, the, the opening scene is spectacular, and it, you know, it immediately throws the audience into, like, this is going to be a ride, a yeah, thrill yeah. ride. Uh, 
But I remember a moment uh, where, you know, you're like, just like trying to solve the next step with Kristen and you, and she asks your name, Rodrigo. Mm -hmm. She doesn't seem to remember you or notice. And you said, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. you're Nora. Yeah. I, I, you know, I know you. Is there a is is that a hint of a backstory? Is there a, like a, a some sort of like love attraction? Yeah, I imagine so. I imagine it was probably yeah. like he like noticed this person across, you know, and she seemed very solitary. And there's like a just like well, who is that? Who is that person who doesn't really you know keeps to herself and you know maybe it's like polite, but yeah, not not much further than that. But just like oh yeah, I wonder who that is, and like found out more about her just by being aware and present whenever she was around. But is, he, uh, is Rodrigo in love with her? Yeah, he's in love. Yeah, that's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> yeah, I know. You got the answer. You look. <laughs> it's just dragging it out of. I of know. You. You've just, you're like holding a shovel and you're like, come on, I'm still digging. This is if I can give me what I want. <laughs> yeah, because want. then, you know, there's, you, there's a very big choice that, the, the, that Rodrigo makes later. Well, like, these people don't, these people have worked around each other for a really long time. Right. So why don't, does, doesn't weird... Nora remember Rodrigo? Because like there are so many people that you encounter, like people miss each other. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. there, are, there are disconnects that happen constantly. That like, instead of being like, oh, I want, like you know, maybe they would have been in love with each other or whatever. It's like mm -hmm. no, I mean, they just sort of missed each other in a work environment that they wouldn't have noticed something that now you do, and you go like, oh shit, do you, is you is w was that you? And you go like, yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. I feel closer to you than I would have ever felt because. I remembered you for one second before everything sucked. Mm -hmm. Like before we all were thinking we're gonna die, mm -hmm. I like saw you for a second and we should have like clocked each other because we should have just valued normal seconds. Mm -hmm. Whereas like, it's not like the long lost love story of- <laughs> like, No, but I see, people. you know, when I see the movie, <laughs> like, it's the choice that, that Rodrigo makes later with the, with the helmet, you know, he specifically gives, you know, a helmet to, uh, to uh, to Nora, that he knows is doesn't have a problem, and but at the end it's a bigger gesture because he actually takes the the yeah. But it could have been me. One. It could have been anyone. Like he he just sacrificed himself. Like fuck. Sure, me. Like, but he makes just... sure. Yeah, sure. But on the movie when we're seeing when the, the impression when you see it twice, of course not in the first one. <laughs> And it's a great storytelling cr trick, actually, because he sees the, the faulty one and cut and you don't to know. Yeah. Nora, here's your helmet, yeah. right? Nice guy. Yeah, nice yeah. guy. Chivalry is not dead, you know? <laughs> 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 anyway. Um, Jessica. Hi. How are you? <laughs> so uh, you've been in several films and, and TV series that are very demanding physically, right? You were in Game of Thrones, uh, Star Wars, Iron Fist. Is, it, there's, is there something about like, you know, like physical, like demanding roles that, that, that excite you? Well, the funny thing is that when I signed, read this, I didn't think it was going to be a physically demanding role. Oh, okay. I was so fucking dumb. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, oh I finally. Thought, a I thought this will be yeah. like uh, easy. Just put me in a suit. We're walking around like pretending to be underwater. Oh, that's going to be fine. Yeah, no. Yeah. The hardest, the hardest film I've done by far. Well, congratulations. I can't like really uh, <laughs> like tell the, the ending of this, but congratulations. Like, people Thank will, you. People will read through the lines. Uh, in this, um, after they see the movie, I don't know. There's people streaming here, live, uh, watching this on TV. I guess. <laughs> yeah, which is awful. Like, it's no, very so strange. On TV with their like, antennas. Gonna see the movie? But, yeah, what do they do? <laughs> that in the. <laughs> no so they've come to the cinema to watch a Q and A for a film they haven't seen. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Or is this streaming after other films? Like, what's happening right now? <laughs> I don't have the answer. Who am I? Where are we? Don't need to get mad. Fortunately. <laughs> um, John. Yeah. So your character Smith mm. is the, the optimist. The, stage the, the optimist. <laughs> optimist. Sure. Of the group. Do you think you will you will act similarly in a real life situation? 
No, I'll never act again, and I'll and I would not <laughs> act uh, optim optimistically. So just to give you a little context, when I got the part very similar uh, to Jessica, I was like, "This doesn't seem so hard, you know." <laughs> but the one thing I wanted to check, I called my agent. I was like, "I just want to make sure that we're not actually going to be scuba diving. Like, are we going to are they going to do this James Cameron style and like take us <laughs> into a silo filled with water and film it underwater?" And they said, "Hang on, we're good. we're going to check." And they got back to me and they said, "No, they're doing dry for wet," which I had never heard before. I was like, "Dry for wet? That's great." Uh, you won't actually be underwater for any of it. And I said, that's great. Sign me up. I'll, I'll do it. And then I flew to New Orleans to start filming, and uh, the plane landed, and I turned my phone on, and there was an email from one of the ADs that was like, hey, John, we're picking you up for your first scuba lesson. What a chance. And I was like, well, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> then you have to tell them I quit. And that was when I met you for the first time. <laughs> you like, you like, you do this? I was like, no. <laughs> And then I was like, okay. And I remember honestly being like, okay, if Kristen's scared, then I, I can be scared. I, I'm a, I can be scared too, and we can just kind of go through this. So this is a long-winded way of saying that I would not be nearly as brave or uh, or optimistic as as my character. I would be like, guys, I'm going to kill myself first <laughs> before we can go out. Uh, Have my oxygen. Here you go. Yeah, exactly. Enjoy yeah, it. Go on and let me know how it goes. I'll be it's staying like, behind. Like, the first time that we're allowed to be like really transparent about how difficult a movie is because it's what it's about. Usually you have to kind of highlight the sort of more positive aspects of making something where you go like, I really liked this. Like, it was hard, but at the same time, no one wants to see like fucking people complaining about making movies because it's sick. And also you're an actor, so shut the fuck up. But then you're like, wait, hold on. This really did like truly suck. But it's what the movie's about. <laughs> so you're like, actually, the yeah. most like honest and like way that really like the way of talking about it that behooves the film is to say that it was, yeah, um, so scary and like so horrific. Like we, it wasn't fun, scary. It was fucked up, scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We t we toughed it out, and but we I went to my scuba lesson with you, yeah. and you were you couldn't have been less afraid. Well, I was excited for the scuba aspect, but I do remember so many times on set looking over and seeing you in your sea stand hooked up like a fucking Buzz Lightyear. Oh, yeah. No, sometimes you had the thousand, you're just staring, <laughs> staring off into the distance. And I was like, are you, are you okay? <laughs> they figured out a system. They didn't want us to get out of the entire suit in between certain takes. Oh, and so no. they're like, well, maybe if we can just keep the torso part on. And they, they organized a thing where they would hook uh, the shoulders up to wires on C-stands and elevate the suit off your shoulders. But you'd sit there and the thing would, you'd kind of be like almost like in a, like hanging like from a hook. And I have a good picture of myself doing the crossword. Yeah, I, I, have, a, I have so many pictures of you doing Sudoku. Like this. Um, or Sudoku. Uh, and then there. There, you, uh, there was a certain point where I was like, you were very itchy. I got extremely yeah. itchy. One day in particular. And when we were like, already trudging through like the thing that was whatever like our little cart was supposed to be able to move and it just fucking wasn't moving and we were like oh we just have to like shoot this thing to get it over with and i looked over and i was like dude are you okay and you were just like <laughs> and then i was like fuck what's wrong are you in pain like what's going on? and he's like no it just fucking itches it's fucking itchy man <laughs> and he was like mm. it was awful i've never i've never experienced an itchiness like this before or after because you're in wetsuits underneath those suits and we had been kind of in and out of the water all day and then we were filming stuff when you were out of water so it started to dry against my the skin the chlorine would it, burn and the chlorine and you couldn't and then like you just that thing took 15 minutes to get in and out of so you couldn't you, it wasn't like i have i have a quick can you, i have this i have a scratch can i please get this off and take so, it and then i'd be like we'll so get you like, 20 minutes later he's like the last person in the whole world has like been in so many shitty weird environments in order to tell a story that like he's like the last person that wants to be like hey guys this kind of sucks so you see john being like <laughs> <laughs> you got to go to your happy place uh, i don't want to complain but um <laughs> i'm fucked <laughs> i have another question for john uh, oh boy. uh so you you kill one of the creatures and uh, and you suggest your your character smith uh, suggests that they are called after you yes because you've shot it, and uh, so if they are called after you, uh, do you think it's a good idea to call them the Smiths? The Smiths, yeah, I think that's good. The creatures could be called the Smiths. <laughs> All right, I like that. That was a question. That's a good one. <laughs> How long did it take you to think uh, of that one? <laughs> I was just sipping my tequila downstairs, and I said, oh, this is gonna be great. Fucking good time guy over here. <laughs> Such a we're nice gonna, moderator. Some, because uh, they're watching us live, I guess. Uh, we have some questions from fans uh, online. Um, here we go. 
Not as funny as the previous ones. <laughs> Kristen, did you have any type of fear of water before making this film? Uh, yeah, totally. I'm like a, t yeah, I I'm like um, uh, super scared of water and like very claustrophobic. So like kind of the worst candidate to oh. be someone to take to, to take this on. You still but, it. Yeah, I, I mean, like, I think actually like, <laughs> We're joking about how hard it was to make the movie, but like I am attracted to things that are difficult, and like the only reason to do something is because it scares you. And um, in this case, it definitely was like, uh, like John, like I didn't fully think about it till the end, and so I was surprised. But at the same time, it was like absolutely what I wanted to do is like see people be pushed to a, a brink that that is dire or whatever. And um, I am so scared of swimming, <laughs> like I fucking hate it. Okay. Um, I'm just like stuff. you hug me too hard, and I'm like, <laughs> like I. It's just like too much like restriction, claustro. It's very quintessentially claustrophobic. So you're lucky you didn't do the abyss. No, I couldn't do that. That was real water. Yeah. We used to. I remember John. Like week two, when we were going, oh my god, what have we done? John texted me a link to the behind the scenes documentary for the abyss oh. and it's it was like a source of comfort yes. for us like oh. those oh guys got God. the bends like they were yeah. literally i would watch they it had it way room. worse it was like i would go home and watch the making of the abyss in my hotel room and be like ah <laughs> the worst thing you could do wow i've got it easy yeah <laughs> okay i that have one like more for christian <laughs> uh what christian what what are the three things you would bring with you if you were going to be stuck seven miles under the ocean Probably William Eubanks because he's like the most enthusiastic motherfucker I've ever met in my life. One of the things. We'd be screwed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'd do like, we'd escape five different types of ways and we would still wouldn't And make still it. would die. But we'd like drink a bunch of Coors Light and be like, yeah. honestly, dude, I feel like we both did a really good job. And fuck this thing. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of Coors Lights and some tequila on pa padding long day. Paddings on the back. <laughs> Okay, dude, fuck it. Dude, and we did the best we could. Now, one for Jessica. Uh, what emojis would you use to describe this film? Oh my gosh. From I would use the emoji where the head is exploding, and then I'd use the octopus emoji, and then I'd probably use the, oh wait, no, I can't. Dead. Uh, the, yeah, the dead, the dead emoji. Dead emoji. Dead. Very good. For John, uh, what was the hardest stunt to do in the film? The Who hardest about that? stunt. There was one day. That it's funny because it's a it's a it's a short little moment in in the film, but I, I get I get yanked away by one of the Smiths, and um, <laughs> I get pulled into this like cavern, and they have to go and and pull me out. And it was it was one of a week where I was just being dragged around, like I was on the ground just being dragged around in the suit all day. And there was one where like the suit got they were pulling me out, and the suit got stuck on a rock, but they didn't know it, and they kept yanking, and I had to like I scream, like I was like my arm is coming out of its socket. <laughs> oh, no. And then uh, and then Vincent Cassell realized he was like he said one day he was like you know we could just put it he was like we could just put like a a, a beard on a stake and stick it in the helmet, and nobody would know that it wasn't John. <laughs> And I remember Vin thinking, Vincent I was Cassell, like, why haven't we done that? Pioneer fucking like old school fucking French filmmaker. He's like, do you guys, you know what? I feel like you could just put a fucking sandbag at the end of the thing. And we just like drag him across the foot. Like fucking, Nouvelle you know, Vague. Like Nouvelle like, Vague. That's, what, dude, that's how we do it. Yeah, totally. You're like, hey, John, um, go home. Yeah. You're like, yeah. <laughs> then I did. So... Uh, <laughs> Was the guy emoji? Right. We're done with that. Okay. Uh, Mamadou, I, unfortunately, this one this, this one has been like sort of answered. <laughs> but how heavy was the suit? Oh, how, okay. Um, it's about 100 pounds. So, um, but the main thing I think about the suits was that it just kind of pinched at certain areas. So aside from the weight, it was just like an odd areas. And just what odd just... areas are you talking about? <laughs> uh, like your shoulders, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> And I guess that uh, uh, takes us to our last Instagram question, which is, uh, were there any movies that, you were, that were your inspiration in making this film? Uh, all of, I mean, a lot of movies. I guess there's like a, I, these guys know, I just babble about other movies all day long. So, uh, but obviously Ridley Scott's a huge uh, visual influence to me. The Abyss is a great uh, underwater action adventure film. It is. 
this I think is a lot scarier than that film. But uh, you know, the the mm -hmm. characters and what they're going through and all those things. Um, yeah, I, a lot of it just sort of comes out of what you end up shooting. So, as a filmmaker, I, I'm very interested in this because you know, there's I there's there's a point of contamination where yeah, of course you you know, are inspired by this movie, but do you watch them before you're shooting or you? rather like leave them honestly like, what um, you remember of them yeah i've never seen deep star six i've never seen leviathan i know a lot of people mention those films but i think they just mention them because they're underwater but i've actually never seen them um and then when you hear people saying oh this could be like that then i don't like to watch them because i don't want to know what mm -hmm. you know what i don't want to take too much from those things i want to take from what i'm already inspired by and, and usually that it goes down to specific designers. We did a lot of stuff in this movie that was actually taken from things like the construction of Hoover Dam and the PLA and the, the art projects that were going on during the um, New Deal uh, that just had to do with like the way, I just feel like the farther you go into the future, the more history you're sitting on top of. So we took a lot of weird inspiration from big public arts projects and mm -hmm. whatnot. So. Well, I want to thank you, Will, and thank you, guys. Thank you, all the cast, Kristen, John, Jessica, and Mamudu. Um, that's about it. Thank Thanks you, Animal Draft House. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you all for being thank here. You. Thank you, everyone watching on, Inst on uh, 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 live stream. And you can see Underwater in theaters this Friday, January 10th. Uh, thank you, and good night. Yeah.